Hi, welcome back to Box of the Lights. We're playing Descent Journeys in the Dark, second edition. I thought we'd have a little dip into this and just show you how it's played. Because I'm actually playing the Road to Legend, which um, is the solitaire or co-op game. And using this app, we've set up, this is like a little side quest that we're in the middle of. I just thought I'd uh, share this with you, why not? Because Descent is something that I've really just started picking up and playing again. It's been sitting on the shelf gathering dust for quite some time. If you haven't considered it, maybe you should, because it's you know an old-fashioned dungeon crawl that's got everything you really need from these traditionally, traditionally Ameritrash games. You know, this fantasy adventure with just dice rolling and hacking and thwacking and just exploring, it's, it's, it's great fun. I've kind of forgotten how much fun these simple uh, dungeon crawlers can be. So here we are, I'm playing Solitaire. I've got two heroes as it goes, Shiva and Sindrael. What's interesting about the, the app, in the menu here, you can, you can say, um, I, don't, I won't quit, but you can say which expansions you have, right? So as you build and add more monsters and heroes to the game, you can tell the app. and because what it's going to do is, for the most part, it's going to be spawning fixed creatures on these adventures. But every now and again, it's going to spawn like a random monster, and that random monster will be dependent on which sets you've got. So, you know, it's a nice way of of playing a co-op campaign using all the content from the expansions that you've you've picked up over over the years. Right, let's kick off then. The app's told me how to set the map up. It's told me these tiles, and it's um, told me to set my heroes up here on the entrance and it's also told me to place an elemental here on this tile it's picked out this square here and when you spawn monsters it highlights this square it says place your monster here as long as your base is on that then you can place it wherever you wish really so I don't know, let's place him here I've done that because I've got some heroes who've got some nice ranged weapons so we can fire through here and hopefully hit this elemental. It's the hero's turn. So I've got Shiva, he's this necromancer, and Sandriel, this, this knight, who I've equipped with a, a elm great bow and also a steel broadsword. The hero's turn summary says start of turn, any start of turn abilities. Refresh cards, anything that was exhausted will refresh. And then it says equip items. And you can see I can either equip my shield and a, and a sword using one hand, one hand, two hands, or the elm great bow using two hands. So I'm going to equip the, the bow. Now the bow doesn't have a range. What it has is dice, a blue and a yellow. Okay? these dice here, that tells you what it attacks with. If I compare that with the the steel broadsword, that's a blue and a red. Okay. Now if we have a look at these dice, here they are. Hearts are hits. Alright, so we've got two, two, three, three, two and a one. Fewer hits on the yellow die, so the sword is stronger but what you'll see on the yellow die, this is the range die, it's got some numbers and when you roll these, this is the range it gives you. So I could roll this and get zero range or roll it and get two range. But I also, as you see, have the blue die, right? So that's the yellow and the blue die. The blue die's got higher numbers, alright? So these are going to give me the range. This is the complete miss, but you've got values like six, three, four, five, or two, alright? So Maybe a value like 3 plus 1, maybe 4, 5, maybe we could get up to 8 range with this thing. The other thing it tells me with my bow is that if I roll one of these lightning bolts, I can add 2 to my range. So if I rolled this side, for example, that could act as 2 range. Or this side, that would be 1 plus 2, that would be 3 range. Or I could choose to do 1 extra damage with it. 
uh, sorry, two extra damage within. So I add two hearts to the die instead. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use my bow, blue and yellow. Is the other dice? You notice that it has this green bow here to show it's a ranged weapon compared to this red axe, a melee weapon. Okay. So uh, blue and a yellow. Uh, that's what I would do for my attack, but you can see I'm quite a long way away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I probably want to move in a little bit closer. And your heroes each get two actions per turn. And you've got a little hero turn summary here. So I've just done start of turn, equip items, that's where I've equipped my bow. Perform two actions. So you can do things like attack, search, move, a special action, rest, stand up. That's if you get knocked down, you can stand up again. Perform, perform a, and this is arrow, an action, ability or skill. Open or close the door, revive a hero. So I'm going to do a sort of a move and attack. Okay. Now my movement is given by my stats here. We've got movement, we've got health, you've got your stamina, this is how much exhaustion you can take, and then your defense, this is a grey die. All right. So this is how many wounds we can take, these are wounds, and this says how much exhaustion we can take, and then if we take four exhaustion, if we take any more exhaustion, each additional exhaustion becomes a wound. All right. Exhaustion is good because it allows us to perform some of our skills, but those skills exhaust us. So you can see I've got skills like Oath of Honor, which costs one exhaustion, or Guard, which costs two exhaustion. All right. Now you'll also notice I'm wearing some leather armor. This gives us plus one health. Sindrail took a wound earlier on in the campaign, so that's sitting here at the moment. It, it could be here, and that could be now 13. But I like to just put it here just to show that that's, um, that's what's happened. Okay, so there's his movement, or her movement, four. So if we move four from here, one, two, three, um, four, then we're within one, two, three, four, five of the beast. Now, unfortunately, there's a river in the way. This terrain is going to cost us two to move into. So if I, even if I move one, two, three... I haven't got enough to move in here, I'd need 5 movement. So I'm going to stop here and I'm at range 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 from the elemental. So let's fire that bow as my second action. All right, so Elm Great Bow, a blue and a yellow die. Now, typically when you're playing solitaire you also roll the enemy's defence at the same time. If I look at the elemental, there's two there's two sets of stats, the top side stats and the bottom side stats. There's two colours of enemy. There's red ones, these are masters, and these teal ones, these creamy ones, these are the minions, right? Masters minions. So the minions are the weaker side, this top panel, and the masters are the stronger side, these bottom ones. This is just a minion, and I know that I had to play a minion because when the app told me to spawn an elemental group, what it meant is I look at the reverse of the enemy card and I look how many players are we, or how many heroes are we rather. So I've got two heroes, so I would spawn one yellow, one minion, zero red, zero masters. If there were three heroes, it would be no minions, one master, okay, one of the red ones. And if there were four heroes, it would be one of each. Alright, so we're playing with the top one, the uh, the teal, the, the, mask, the minions. Okay, and it's got four movement, four health, and this one defense die. All right, that's a black die as it goes. Okay. So what you can do is if you're playing solo, you can just roll the attack and defense all together, or you can roll them separately like this and then roll the defense afterwards. All right. Roll them all together, that's absolutely fine. Okay, let's roll and see what we get. Incidentally, the grey die is slightly weaker, the black die is the stronger one. So if you can compare, this is a strong enemy. Some of the weaker enemies, like the bar guest, the zombie, they've got grey defence dice. Okay, now we count up the number of hearts, our range, and the number of shields. So the first thing to do is say, well, have we got the range for this tack to hit? We've got range 2 plus 2, 4. Okay, but we do have one lightning bolt here. Remember, that will give us plus two range if we want it. 
So four, one, two, three, four is not enough to get us there. Five, six, we can get there with the power up here. Unfortunately, that means we can't use it for the plus two damage. All right, we've had to use it for the range. Okay, now we count the heart. So we've done the range. This plus this plus this gives us the six range we need. Now we count the hearts. One, two, three. And then we take away the number of shields. One, two. So that leaves one heart, one damage to this beast. Here we are. One wound. Now as it goes, what are we trying to achieve? Why are we trying to kill this thing? Well, we're trying to follow a pathway. The adventure told us that so the app has led us on this little story and we're following these footprints. We've reached this burnt out building and on the other side of the building is an exit. This is a front door and a back door. This is our objective here, the back door, where we'll find the trail to this dragon we're searching. We'll continue. So our aim is to get through here. This big old beast is standing in our way. So we can either try and run around him or kill him. Okay. He's got, we can take four wounds. We've done one. What's difficult is that he's going to start attacking us. He's got a red and a blue die to attack us with, but he also has a set of special actions like fire, earth, water, air, and the app will tell us how these get applied on the monster's turn. Okay, so the app's going to control this thing. The other thing on the map here is this token. Again, the app told us where to place it, and this is a search token. If we search here, we might find some loot we draw from this deck that will help us. All right, so there we go. So we've moved, we've attacked. That's our two actions. Now there is a two-player um, errata that says if you're playing two heroes, at the end of your turn, you can do one of two things. You can either recover two health or you get a free basic attack. So we're going to take our free basic attack. That's our free action. Um, it's, it's purely for two heroes, just a little balancing mechanism. It's uh, added in the latest errata set from Fantasy Flight Games. So let's do that attack again. Same thing, the bow, blue and yellow die. And we're hoping to do a little bit more damage on him. Okay, that's good. We've got three range. We've got a lightning bolt, which gives us the plus two range. That's only five range, though. One, two, three, four, five. Not enough to hit him. I don't think we've got anything else here that can help us. No, none of our special abilities. All right, so that attack, we didn't fire far enough. So now we pick up our app and we say Sindril, end turn. And what it says is it's the monster's turn to activate and it's going to be the minion elementals that activate. That's all we've got on the board is a minion. And they're going to do two of these things. Right? There's a little special instruction. Immediately after an elemental uses Earth, place it onto the closest empty spaces, not adjacent to a hero. So a little bit of AI there. And we're going to work our way down these arrows. Okay, It's only going to perform two of these. And the two it performs, well, it depends on the logic. But let's start at the, the top. It says engage as many heroes as possible within five spaces of this monster. Well, we know there aren't any heroes, one, two, three, four, four, within five spaces. So we skip that little bit of logic. And then it says, use Earth. This is his first action. Okay, Earth. Earth says, each hero adjacent to this monster must test one of their skills. Each hero that fails is immobilized. Well, there aren't any heroes adjacent. And it says, immediately after the using Earth, place it onto the closest empty spaces not adjacent to any hero. Okay, so Earth does nothing. Yep. Each hero that falls is... Um, yeah, okay. Uh, next, we... So immediately after Elemental uses Earth, place it in the closest empty spaces not adjacent to hero. So this thing is going to rush around. And the closest empty spaces, any one of these will do. So let's put it here. That's action number one. Action number two, spot the closest hero. So spot tells the monster to move to a space within three of a hero. In other words, within range of a hero. Now, if an action tells a monster to move to a space it's already at, spot here does, then it skips that action. So instead we move to the next action. So its first action was use Earth. Its second action is going to be attack the closest hero. The elemental does ranged attacks, so it's going to attack 
Cinderail here and it's going to attack with it's a minion not a master blue and red and I get to use Cinderail's defense of one grey I've got nothing else that's going to help me here so let's do this attack the earth elemental now is attacking us this is this is pretty much you know a big part of the apart from the story we are rolling dice resolving attacks so we got two defense so that's helped he's got his three range that will hit us those two cancel out those two that leaves us with three wounds to suffer well, that's okay I should be able to recover those soon enough alright then we just say all minions have been activated we've done the two activations hit the button now it says to activate the masters there's none on the map so all elementals activated and now it comes back to the hero turn and you can see Cinderail is marked as tick, done, and now it's the turn of Shiver.